Good morning, everyone. So good to see you in the house of our Lord. I was waiting for our wonderful bell to be rung. You know, that has been with us for over 100 years. And to hear that, to bring in the community of faith and those online as well, absolutely beautiful. Uh, before we begin today, I want to mention, I said this a few uh, months ago, and uh, she's probably tired of me saying it because she's been at both earlier services. But if you have a birthday on Sunday, I wanted us to celebrate that with you. And I don't know if anybody here has a birthday today except Miss Bonnie's birthday is today. <laughs> so I thought we ought to sing happy birthday to her. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Woo! Love you, Bonnie. <laughs> She helps at all, us at all three services now, so I know she was probably getting tired of hearing that, but we do love her very, very much. Our prelude this morning that we're going to play as we light the candles symbolizing the light of Christ in our sanctuary is titled, God of Our Fathers. <laughs> Amen. Wonderful, Miss Lori. Wonderful. I was telling her as I came in how thankful I am for her voice as well. As you know, she's a, a dear woman of so many talents, and she led a solo in the uh, previous service that was just absolutely beautiful. Can we all say amen? amen. Being Father's Day started about 1910 uh, in our country and honoring the fathers a few years before in certain areas, but uh, in 1910, uh, many places started honoring uh, uh, dear 
uh, fathers and uh, started through the YMCA, and we just praise the Lord for that uh, recognition. So I'm going to ask as we pray today, all guys, uh, if y'all will just stand in the choir and in the congregation, just stand all the fellows for just a moment, remain standing, and let's just welcome all of them, of course, here today. We're glad to have fellows here with us representing fatherhood. Remain standing. And uh, let's just pray uh, for our invocation. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day and a wonderful worship service. We've already experienced truly your grace and glory with the prelude and now our prayers. We ask that you guide us. Thank you for Father's Day. Thank you for these dear men that are in our sanctuary that represent fatherhood. We just ask your blessings to be upon them and all of us now in the name of Christ. And may all of God's children say, Amen. you may be seated, fellas. And as uh, Miss Bonnie comes to give us our welcome and announcements, if you have a bulletin, please pull that out. And uh, let me mention that at the very end of our service today, Miss Irene Brew has set up a special blessing for all the men that are here, and we'll explain that during the last hymn, but you'll have an opportunity to receive a blessing, and uh, I think you'll enjoy that very much. The uh, 9 o'clock service, it was absolutely beautiful. Miss Bonnie? Since the pastor wasn't sure that I knew today was my birthday, he's only told me three times. <laughs> but in the other two services, he told everybody I was 29 years old. It isn't true, and I happen to be a person who's very proud of the years they've lived, and I have plagued people all my life, because if I knew your age, I would tell it, even when I was 10, and my mother didn't want me to, but I have my entire life, so if you ever knew me and were around me, and I knew your birthday's age, I would say, oh yeah, she's or he's so-and-so, so I'm telling everybody, I'm 82. I might not have done it if you'd said 28, only because when my father got to be 80, he said, I'm tired of being 80. I'm eight. <laughs> and the next year he says, okay, now I'm 18. And the next year it was 28, and I said, okay, Dad, fine, whatever. Anyway, do we have any guests with us? I hope not this morning. <laughs> Didn't think about that. Okay. Yes, sir. Would you tell us who you are and where you're from? And I'm sorry to have bored you to death. <laughs> well, welcome. May you enjoy the service. Uh, we want to thank the Second Life Thrift Store for our new air purifier that's in the Friendship Hall. We're hoping to help protect all of those in the building now and in the future. And that air purifier is the same one that they have in their shops. So they have truly blessed us. Dr. Shaver's Bible studies on sanctification that many ordered have come in and can be picked up at the table on my left as you go out, and there are extras if anyone wants one but didn't order them, and they're $2 each. On Tuesday at 12.30 p.m. in the Friendship Hall is a special called meeting of all past volunteers of the Forget-Me-Nots and any new individuals who might like to volunteer. Now since I told you this crazy story in the beginning, I know you're all awake. So at the, la at the worship committee meeting, which was held on Thursday, it was voted to extend times of services beginning July 18th. So eight o'clock will be eight to nine, nine will be 9.30 to 10.30, and 11 will be 11 to 12. Just want you to to give you a heads up so everyone will be aware. There will be more to follow. Also, as you noticed when you came in today, the ropes have come down, all material is back in the pews, and we are asking you to sign the registration pads and pass them to your neighbors so that all information can be updated. Thank you for your help and your assistance, and may we now, 
And may we now have the call to worship. Oh, this is, next Sunday is Change for Change Sunday. Be strong and take courage. Do not fear nor be dismayed. For the Lord will go before you, and his light will show the way. Be strong and take courage. Do not fear. months there I was getting the hymn of benediction and the hymn of preparation mixed up. Now it looks like I'm going to the hymn of praise. If you will join us for the hymn of praise on page 528 if you'd like to use your hymn. Uh, I'm having a problem this morning. 529, I'm glad it's on the screen. 529 is we'll sing the first, at second, and the fifth verses of How Firm a Foundation. Please remain standing, if you will. Miss Bonnie will lead us now in our Psalter reading. Our Psalter this morning is Psalm 9, verses 11 through 14. Please join the choir with the response. <laughs> Praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. The Lord who avenges blood is mindful of them. Be gracious to me, O Lord. See what I suffer from those who hate me. You are the one who lifts me up from the gates of death, that I may recount all your praises, and in the gates of the daughter of Zion rejoice in your deliverance. We shall tell among the peoples the glorious deeds of the Lord. Please join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified dead, and was buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. be seated. If you have your uh, weekly calendar, if you'll turn that over, you have our prayer concerns. And let me update you on just a few of those before we pray uh, this morning. Um, We have our um, scouts uh, here at the previous service. Brother Ken is our representative to them, and we honored uh, the cross that's been put up in the back, our Eagle Scout project. And um, most of the scouts were in uniform, and a number of them I saw at the altar time came and knelt. It was just beautiful, beautiful. Uh, And a few of the scouts are also members of our youth fellowship, and so they're leaving tomorrow morning about 11 o'clock to go to our Leesburg youth camp. And uh, we've been going there every year forever, and uh, it was canceled last year. Uh, But they've opened it back up this year, and there's about 11 kids uh, that are leaving tomorrow and will be there all week long. On Thursdays is the emphasis of their salvation. So I would ask that you try to put that on the uh, back of your mind to be in prayer for them. And then on Friday night before the closing, they offer an altar call of those that might be called into the mission field. So it's just a beautiful week of worship and celebration. And so if you can be in prayer for those 11 folks, they're taking our old school bus early in the morning. You've seen parked back there behind the sanctuary. And uh, we have some folks that are taking it, Chip and uh, John Jones and Linda and Kristen. They're all taking the kids there and Laura and Joshua. So be in prayer for them. Uh, Fred Brookshire family, if you'd be in prayer for them, many of them came in for the service yesterday and they're flying back uh, over the next day or two to their homes. Um, And we had a beautiful service. Miss Debbie Wright led the service uh, and did a wonderful job yesterday at Robert's funeral home. Uh, Jenny Flanagan, uh, we saw on our email prayer chain, so we checked with her. Uh, Her cancer numbers went up and she is uh, so positive, but just needs our prayers. So if you can pencil her in, Jenny and her husband is Ed uh, Flanagan. I know that would mean the world to all of them. And then we just heard at the previous service that Joanne Wingo, many of you know Joanne, had to be taken to the hospital this morning. And I have not heard anything. I'm going to actually check my phone if you'll give me permission. I don't think I see anything there. Uh, Somehow the garage door came down and hit her in the head. And uh, so they took her to the hospital because she had some weakness in her legs. And um, so we're just trusting everything's okay. I'm not even sure which hospital she's been taken to, but hopefully we can find out, put that on the email prayer chain, and you can pick that up. But if you would just keep Joanne in your prayers, I know that uh, she would appreciate that as well. Remember, when you leave today, you can take the prayer cards, drop them in the offering plate with your offering, and they will go on our, our prayer chain. Uh, if you have any personal requests. If you'll hold these in your hands, we'll ask Miss Bonnie to come and lead us in prayer, and then we share the Lord's Prayer. We don't sing it except on communion now, but we'll share the Lord's Prayer in closing. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come to you this morning in praise and adoration. We come to you seeking your grace. 
Lord, we ask you to be with each one of us here, especially fathers today. And there, there are many people, men who were never biological fathers, but have truly been fathers to people that they have come in contact with. So let them feel your arms, your presence, and your love. We need them and we need you. For those of us who lost fathers, we now have someone else who was there to help us. Lord, be with this country, be with our leaders, whether at the national level or at the city level. Help them to lead as they should lead and be aware that all of us are made in your image. One is not better than another. Each and every one of us are the same. However, we also know that you gave us a choice. A choice that we can choose you or not. A choice that we can live by your rules or not. But for every choice, there is a consequence. And that consequence will come to fruition at some point. And may we never forget that because of some of the choices this country has made, we are seeing some of those consequences now when life has been come so cheap. Lord, may we truly seek you and understand your book is the book that you wanted written. Your book is the truth and it's the way to live to the fullest and it also offers us eternal peace, eternal life and we will see you in heaven one day. Lord, be with each one who has been on our prayer chain and those that Pastor Eddie has lifted up. We ask you to be with those for healing in whatever form it takes. Lord, be with those who are seeking you that they may find you. May be that person that stops to kind of talk and you don't know why they want to talk. Maybe the question needs to be, is there anything I can do for you? No, you still have the right to say yes or no. But sometimes it's just that little question that they know that someone really does care and is willing to listen. Lord, help all of us to be all that we can be. We lift you our pastor and his family as he leads his flock in this trying time. We ask you to be with our military, our firemen, our policemen, our EMTs, our caregivers, all of those who try so hard to keep us safe. And Lord, keep them safe because they have families also who love them. Be with our service and may it be a blessing to each one here and may it glorify you for it is in knowing you truly knowing you and having faith that what you have said will happen as it has so many times in the past that we can say as Paul said in that cell, it's okay. He's with me. He'll be with me. He'll never leave me. And whatever the end, it's okay. Lord, we lift to you all of our silent prayers.
And Lord, may we never forget that the structure of the family was set up by you. And for that, we thank you. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please rise for the reading of the scripture. Our scripture this morning is taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along. Just as he was in the boat, there were, they were, there were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drowned? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. Please remain standing, if you will, and uh, Miss June will lead us in our next hymn. If you will join me for our hymn of preparation, and if you want to use your books, it is in, on page 368, verses 1 and 4 of My Hope is Built. <laughs> You may be seated. We have a special treat today. Brother Stephen Sly is going to give us our special music. And as you all know, during the summer months, we uh, ask different ones to volunteer to lead in worship. And it's always a tremendous blessing. So uh, we're just looking forward. Brother Stephen, to you blessing us. Oh, give us homes. Built firm upon the Savior, where Christ is head and comes Lord and guide, where every child is taught. Oh. 
Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. How he can sing high and low, I have no idea. (laughs) That was amazing, amazing, amazing. Also a blessing in the uh, pastoral ministry. Brother Stephen, I've asked if he would preach for us for our July the 4th a sermon uh, at 9 and 11 o'clock. We've got some wonderful presentations musically as well on that special Sunday. I have family I haven't seen since my mom and daddy died coming up from Miami, and we'll be together late Saturday night. So I asked if Stephen wouldn't mind doing that, and so he's preparing the message uh, for that day that will bless, again, all the wonderful music. And our bell choir is going to be performing that day as well. Can we all say amen? amen? Let's pray. Father, thank you again for such a beautiful service and an opportunity uh, to worship thee in spirit and in truth. We just ask that you guide us now in this Father's Day message. Uh, and I believe you have a word for all of us. I know you have already given me a special word today. And I, I pray that everyone will receive in their own way a word from your Holy Scriptures. And so I'm just trusting that, trusting that we can touch the hem of your garment. You truly are our Father in Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen. Let me remind you again that during our last hymn, we're going to ask the fellas uh, to come forward. Uh, We're going to have different stations uh, up front here. 
And as we're all standing singing the last hymn, we're going to ask the fellows to come. And just to whatever station you see a person, there'll be a gentleman there with the anointing oil and just a little prayer card. And we just want to pray God's blessing over you, just God's blessing over you. And as I said, we did that at 9 o'clock, and it just was very moving. Uh, And this is for all men uh, that are gathered here today, and even in the choir, if they will come down and be with us uh, during that time. And you're welcome to stand or kneel at the altar a moment or return right back to your seats uh, for our closing of the worship service. Titled the message today, Why Are You So Afraid? This comes, of course, from the scripture that Bonnie read to us about Jesus. Jesus and his uh, patriots are traveling uh, around the seashore as we pick up in this chapter and moving from place to place. Uh, Bonnie and I were talking about that early this morning. I mean, the only other way would be to walk all the way around that giant seashore and was quite lengthy. So many times they would just take the boat across uh, where he could share his faith and his healing power. And of course, in one of these scenes in uh, the story she read, you're all familiar with, is that he is asleep in the boat and the storm comes or the squall and uh, everybody is afraid. And Jesus, uh, they have to wake him up. I mean, right in the middle of all this all, Jesus is asleep. And that's where I'm going to emphasize hearing God today. And when they wake him up, there's a miracle. There is a miracle. And they are astounded that even the wind and the waves, they obey this man called Jesus. Uh, But then he looks at his disciples and he said, why are you so afraid? And you know, what a perfect message for us today coming out of the pandemic. Uh, And I know that there's still some craziness going on. We understand that. But Uh, We are on this end of it. Thank God the ropes, as we said, are down and you got the pew pads. We need your registration pads. Mentioned to you earlier, if you update your cell number or uh, that's how I know who's here and who's not here so that I can pray. And if we don't see somebody for a few weeks, then uh, we want to touch base with them, make sure that they're okay. Uh, So we're just excited to have some of these things back. And uh, but the media has as the propaganda has just kind of putting fear in the forefront, you know, and uh, control in the forefront. And, and not that we shouldn't um, be diligent in protecting folks just like the air purifier over in the Friendship Hall. I mean, there's just some good things that we can do. Um, if you get within six feet of a University of Florida Gator, sorry, Stephen here, if you get within six feet, we know you need to back up six feet, right? You know, you want to make sure you got your garnet and gold on or your Louisiana uh, jersey on as well, LSU. So, um, you know, there's certain things that's not crazy that you just to protect yourself, protect others, but we've been taken advantage of, you know, uh, in this boat, And uh, I wonder if Jesus isn't saying the same thing to us that he said to his disciples. And I believe it comes from our Heavenly Father. Why are you so afraid? Why are you so afraid? It makes you ponder for a few moments. When I was just a little boy, couldn't have been no more than four or five years old, I was at a gathering with my parents. And uh, I know I've shared this with some of you before, maybe a Father's Day sermon, because I've been trying to think of Father's Day image. And uh, I remember... You know, my security was my dad, uh, which was a good, you know, symbol of, of fatherhood. And um, so I would drift away a little bit, play with the kids. But I always knew where my dad was because he had on blue trousers. And so I just kept my eyes, because I'm so small, on blue trousers in the midst. And I remember seeing that in my mind. I can remember as a little boy looking, finding those blue trousers. Something stirred me. I don't, I don't know what it was. Scared me. And I ran for my dad's protection. I ran and I grabbed hold of his trousers. And you can imagine the uh, strange feeling I had when I looked up and somebody else was wearing my dad's trousers. Amen. (laughs) Somebody else had on blue pants. You know, I mean, that never occurred to me as, as a little boy. So as I was thinking of that and it's kind of a fond, funny memory, I thought, oh, Lord, you know, if we could just get a hold of the hem of your garment, the way it's described in the New Testament, the hem of your garment, Heavenly Father, that we would have peace and safety and joy and goodness and kindness. Hold on to the hem of your garment. But I wonder, when's the last time you looked up to make sure who you're holding on to? Is it the Father of the Bible? Think of that now. You know, a lot of people have created God the Father in their own image. They've created him in their own image. So is, is the, the, the blue trousers of, of safety, you know, and you grab hold of that, is, is that connected to the heavenly father? 
really made me ponder this week. The A of our ABCs obviously is, why are you so afraid? Didn't they have a right to be afraid? You know, I mean, really, you know, I mean, the, the, the water's coming in. According to the story, it's filling up the boat. And Jesus is asleep. Does Jesus not care? Have you ever had a time in your life, I'm sure you have, I know I have, that you wonder if the heavenlies care about what you care about? You know, what, what, you know, do you not understand, God, that we could go under here? You know, somebody could drown. And yet Jesus is asleep, asleep. Fear can grab hold of us as it has the last couple of years. Remember this verse. Here's a good memorization verse this morning. 1 John 4:18. 1 John 4:18. Perfect love casteth out all fear. Don't you love that? Perfect love. God's perfect love. The heavenly Father's perfect love. His kind of love casteth out all fear. I heard a famous uh, pastor years ago say that the opposite of love is not hate. But the opposite of love is fear, and fear produces hate. I want to enter into God's rest, into God's Sabbath. Remember, the word Sabbath just means a, a spiritual rest, a whole, wholeness, a rest in God. The Spirit took me to the Old Testament, 2 Kings chapter 6. Some of you might want to look that up on Father's Day when you have nothing else to do. 2 Kings chapter 6, it's the story of Elisha. And the bad guys are all around him. And so with that taking place, they're afraid, just like the fellows are in the boat with Jesus. They're afraid, and they have a reason to be afraid. And so Elisha prays to the Heavenly Father, and he said, Father, please open their eyes so they can see what I can see. And they're Eyes are opened up, their spiritual eyes. And do you remember the story? What they see is those fiery angels holding their swords. There's more of them than there was of the bad guys. Is it possible that there's angels all around us? Is it possible that God is all around us taking care of us? Even in the midst of the choppy waters of our life, the storms and the struggles and, and all of these crazy things that's taken place in our lives? Is it possible that Lord is there still and taking care of us? Do you remember the resurrection narrative of, of, of Thomas when he's there with Jesus and, and he sees Jesus and Jesus said, feel the nail prints and, and uh, where I was stuck with a sword. And he said, blessed are you because you see, Thomas. But then he said, blessed are those who do not see physically, do not see physically and believe. You know what? He was giving you and me a blessing right there. You and me a blessing that we are blessed when we have not seen the physical Savior because we believe simply in faith. Simply in faith. And that blesses the heavenlies. And that attacks the demons because they can't stand real, purified faith. Faith, 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 faith. The B of our ABCs. The A obviously is afraid. The B of our ABCs is the disciples moving from one place to another. They'd always leave the crowd behind them. Leave the crowd behind them. I think it's time we need to look at the crowd that we're in, and maybe we need to leave the crowd behind us. The crowd behind us. When I was just a teenager, I wanted to be accepted by my peers. And then I remember getting involved with some things that I should not have gotten involved with only because I wanted their acceptance. And I wish those things would go away with our teen years, but many of us, you understand, even in our adult years, are struggling with acceptance. And we will end up doing just about anything, watching anything, hearing anything, and, and achieving things that we shouldn't be achieving so that we might feel connected, so that we might somehow find peace in the midst of this crazy world in which we live in and all of our emotions going crazy. And I question again, is the Prince of Peace, is the heaven? Heavenly Father, the one with the blue trousers, the hem of his garment that you're holding on to. We are to leave the crowd behind us. Think about Daniel. You remember how he got in trouble in the Old Testament? Every day, the scripture says, a couple times a day, he would turn to Jerusalem and open his window and pray. He was in exile in Babylon. And so his peers didn't like him because he was favored. And so they were able to convince the king to come up with a royal edict 
that no one could pray to any God except the king. That had to make him feel good, and it did. You know, for a certain amount of time, seemed to make sense to him. And as soon as that was passed, it was time for Daniel to do his daily prayers. And what does Daniel do? Open his window, faces Jerusalem, begins to pray. And they get the royal police and they arrest him. And the king can't find a way out because he actually likes Daniel, if you'll remember that story. And so they have to throw him into that hungry den of lions. I wonder if there were angels all around. I don't know if he saw them, but I bet they were. I bet he saw those lions, I'm sure. What a man of faith, willing to give his life, willing to hold on to the real hem of the Lord's garment there, hold on to his heavenly Father, doing what was right, leaving the crowd behind him. We need to leave hell behind us. Now, I don't know about you. (laughs) I think Brother Ray and I are probably in the same boat here. I, I, and I'll say this honestly, and I don't mind, I'm unashamed of this, as your pastor, that I am in love with Jesus as you are, and I know that's eternal life. But part of my salvation, part of my motivation of going to heaven is I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. Now, I don't want to give you like the old days of fire brimstone sermon just on hell. I don't want to do that. But I do want to emphasize, I believe in hell. And I don't want to go there. And I don't want my loved ones to go there. And I don't want my friends to go there. I don't want my enemies. Well, maybe a few. But I don't know. No, I don't want them to go there either, you know. And I know that, that Jesus, everybody meets Jesus. I know that. I know that in the afterlife, they go to Jesus. Even, even an atheist, they go to Jesus. And he looks at their heart. Praise God. That in judgment is in Jesus' eyes, not mine, you know. But there is a hell, and the Scriptures teach that over and over again. I know that. I believe that because it's in the Bible. Listen to this. Matthew 10, 28, the words of our loving Savior. Matthew 10, 28, Jesus said, let me tell you who to fear. So we should fear something. He said, don't fear those that can kill the body. Don't fear COVID-19. It can kill the body, right? Jesus said, don't fear things that can just kill the body. Then he said, I'll tell you who to fear. Because see, you've got to fill up that area in your life. He said, fear the one that can destroy your body and soul in hell. Fear the, This is our loving Savior, Jesus Christ. Remember, his greatest attribute is he's God. He's holy. He's holy other. And he says, fear the one that can destroy you. So I don't want to go to hell. I don't think you do either. So I have a loving, wonderful Savior that's drawn me close to his side as he has yours. And if not, I would encourage you to draw close to him, to confess your sins and ask that he forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Can you say amen? Now, finally, the C of our ABCs, they wake Jesus up. This is the best part for me in the sermon. They wake him up. He is asleep, I mentioned earlier. The boat is going crazy. It's filling up with water, and he is asleep. And he's not only asleep, he is on a comfy cushion. He is enjoying the moment. They're going crazy. Jesus is sound asleep. I would not doubt he's not in there snoring. I bet he's having a good time. He's, do you have a good pillow? Does anybody know what it is to have a good pillow that just fits you? You know that, you know, and if you don't have your pillow, I can't sleep, you know, or maybe you have a certain way you lay that you can go to sleep. And if you can't lay on that side or this side, you can't sleep. Jesus is comfortable in that boat where the rest of the people are scared to death. Jesus is comfortable. Now, early in the morning, I've told you before, I get up just part of my routine, pray. And uh, when I, many times when I, if I finish prayer and it's still real early, if I finish early, still dark and, uh, you know, or, or just breaking day and, and the family's not up yet or I don't have a hospital run to make, I'll crank back my chair, take a little snooze since I get up so early, you know. But I, my neck hurts. Well, I've got a garnet and gold jacket, a Florida State jacket. I really do. And I I pull it in there, and I can just make it so comfy. 
just right behind my neck. I can get you one if you want one, you know. Makes it real comfy, right? And I can, I'll catch myself. <gasps> you ever do that? <gasps> you know, I'm asleep there, you know. Jesus is comfy in that. But how dare him? Doesn't he know what's going on in the United States of America? Doesn't he know what's going on in the church? Where is he? How can he be comfy? How can he be asleep? Do you want a miracle? Well, to get the miracle, you got to wake him up, right? You got to wake him up, you know, you know, but he seems to be a little flustered there, right? When he, they wake him up, you know, and, and what does he do immediately? He calms the storm, the winds, the waves, and they're, they're aghast. You know, how can he do that? How in the world can he do that? And then he just looks at them, you know, the question, you know, why are you so afraid? Why are you so afraid? You wouldn't get the miracle if you didn't wake him up. So was the storm a good thing, you know, to, to, to make him wake him up? Then it dawned on me. He, he turned his comfy pillow into the sea. He just, he's, he's always calm. The only time I know that he's not calm is on the cross when he cries out. Do you remember that? You know, cries out, why have you forsaken me? There just seems to be a break between Jesus and the heavenly father, doesn't it? Doesn't it? I know different theologians see that in a variety of ways, but there, there seems to be a distress call. It seems to be there on the cross, but I don't see that anywhere else. And I don't see it in that boat. What would happen if, if they did not wake him up? I mean, would Peter have drowned? John drowned, fell over the boat. I mean, would that even be important? Would it, would, you know, Jesus sound asleep. What if the water came over his head and, and, and drowned Jesus? Would that, he's at peace. He's at complete rest in the midst of that storm. This is just baffling to me now that I'm looking at it and thinking about it and praying about it as you're going to see our challenge in just a moment. What is the Lord trying to say here? And what does he do? But he lets his peace come out of him. And that's what happens to the wind and the waves. Everything just calms down like his comfy pillow. So on Father's Day, I have a challenge for you. A challenge for you. Not only you guys, but you gals as well. My daddy loved to fish. And he used to tell me, he said, son, he said, what I like is, he said, I like everything just as smooth a lake. You'd only go fishing out on the lakes. He had done enough out in the ocean in the Navy, so he was just a lake fisherman. And he said, uh, I want it just as smooth like glass. He said, because then I can just go, you know. He said, that's heaven to me. I remember him telling me that. And I remember also thinking, well, that would be heaven to me too if I had a bucket of something beside me, right? Amen. Fried chicken there with me, that would be, be a little bit more heaven, you know. I challenge you this week to take, an, to take something about your dad. Now, some of you may have had a wonderful earthly father. Maybe some of you don't remember your father, earthly father, or maybe you had a, a terrible earthly father, you know. But you have some kind of memories, even if, you, if your father was not anywhere around somebody that was that image to you somewhere in your life. I want you to take that image, that thought, sometime today, even if it's before you lay down on your comfy pillow tonight, just for a moment, and I want you to think of that situation and what happened, and then I want you to pray, would my heavenly Father have done the same thing? Would my heavenly Father have done the same thing? And I tried that out. Now, this comes from our, our Wesley groups that are meeting on Thursdays now. Some of you are part of that, and uh, the book we're using talks about taking a theme and going into the scripture and reading the Bible with a theme, reading the gospels with a theme. In other words, you know, Lord, I'm struggling with my finances. Is there, is there a word here in this passage today that could give me some en encouragement or whatever it may be? And I thought if we could do it that way, why can't we pray with a theme? So this is the theme, you know, what would my heavenly father do differently? Or maybe the same as my earthly father did. And I thought about this story because we're talking about Jesus calming the water of my dad liking that perfectly calm water. And we say in that when it's choppy, would my heavenly father do the same thing? I mean, he could do it, right? And what I felt in my heart was the Lord saying, no, I'd leave it as is. Because the choppy water is just as beautiful as the smooth water. 
Why didn't my dad want it smooth? He had a lot of anxiety. And he liked his physical to be at peace. He said there was no better time for him when everybody was, you know, in bed at night and he knew everybody was safe and secure. He needed to see that physically. That was just him. But that's not the world we live in, right? So my heavenly father, he would say, I believe, leave the water choppy. There's a reason for that. But you can still have peace. Do you have that peace? Do you have the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart? In a few moments, the guys are going to be able to come up for the blessing. Ladies, you can receive that blessing as well where you are in the presence of God. I challenge you today to have some kind of prayer to your heavenly Father. What would he do in this situation? Bow with me for a moment. Father, thank you again for Father's Day. What a tremendous blessing. Lord, we know, and Bonnie prayed about this a few moments ago as well, that not everybody had a wonderful earthly father, or maybe it was a distant father, or whatever it may be. But we need to find a way to find you, our heavenly father, and to make sure it's, it's truly you, that the blue trousers we're looking for belong to you. And the word of God, Old and New Testament, the covenant, teaches us about you. So speak to us this morning, and may all of God's people say, Amen and Amen. Let's all stand together while Miss June and the choir come and lead us in our closing song. I'm going to ask the men that are going to do the anointing, if they'll go ahead and get in their places so you can see where they're going to gather. And they're just going to be at the different sections here, if you will. And then, uh, and you can come and kneel at the altar if you'd like, or stand at the altar. But I'm going to ask when Miss June starts singing that the guys, don't be shy. Just come up, and they'll just anoint you with oil, and you can be in a line. And then just, uh, if you want to kneel or go right back to your uh, pew, and they'll give you the prayer card as well, okay? Go ahead, Miss June. If you will join me for our heaven benediction on page 530, and we'll be singing first and fourth verses, or are you able?
open. I've asked uh, Lori to do another song, June. It's on 377. Just want to do the first verse. This is one we did at our memorial service. It was so beautiful. It's, uh, it is well with my soul. So any of the fellas, if y'all want to come forward. If you need your hymnal, it's 377. Thank you. remain standing. That was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. We asked the dear gentleman if he would go with Brother Ken to the chapel just to be in prayer uh, for him. There was a, a lot of healing uh, taking place there. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. While I was watching those come into the altar and uh, I saw Jim and Wynn. I don't know. Y'all may have been here other services, but that's the first I've seen you. And Jim is the one that's done all of our marquetry, you know, around the building here. And we love having you home, Jim and Wynn, and others that are back, maybe for the first time. Amen. We're going to ask Miss Bonnie if she'll give us our benediction. Our choir will lead us, and then we'll have our postlude. Miss Bonnie. Dear Lord, we come to the end of our service. We thank you for what you have given to us today. We thank you for the message, and may we truly absorb it, understand it, and use it. And Lord, bless each and every man here and those online because they have fathered someone in some way. And sometimes we don't realize how important it is. But there is always that time when someone passes, crosses your path and all they needed was, is there something I can do? And they needed a listening ear. So let us remember to slow down and listen because that's when healing starts for all of us. So, Lord, go with each one of us this week. Be with us, carry us safely home, and bring us safely back. And may God bless you in every way.
In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated, and as you know our tradition, we are now going to be blessed with our postlude as we extinguish the candles, and as I hold the light out, it represents you taking the light of Christ to the world. Our postlude is titled, Fanfare on Lions. Oh, my, 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 my. Yes, indeed. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Walter. <laughs> Dear friends, may we all rise. So good to have you here today. Don't forget we have new prayer quilts. You can pick up a prayer bear or put your prayer request on the prayer wall. Wave to each other. We'll see you next Sunday morning.